Hello students, today let's discuss about the anatomy of female reproductive tract. Female reproductive tract includes two groups of organs, external genital organs and the internal genital organs. And the external genital organs, okay, the first topic we'll be discussing is the vulva. Now, vulva includes the mons pubis, labia majora, labia minora, clitoris and vestibule. Okay, vulva is the external genital organ of a female which includes the following structures. Okay, let me show you all the individual structures so that you can have a clear idea about what we are discussing. Okay, now in this image, this thick pad of connective tissue which has this pubic hairs, okay, which contains this pubic hairs, this region is known as mons pubis okay now these thick folds of skin which are present laterally okay these thick folds of skin which are present laterally these are known as labia majora okay now let me show you what exactly are labia minora now these thick folds of skin okay now these thick folds of skin which are present a medial to the labia majora okay these two thick folds of skin which are present medial to the labia majora so these uh, these folds are known as labia minora okay now what else you have to keep in mind now guys once concentrate the labia majora okay the labia majora they are uniting posteriorly and forms a structure known as a posterior a commissure okay posterior commissure now in the same way even labia minora labia minora they will also meet posteriorly and forms a structure known as a four a sheet okay so four sheet is a structure because of the fusion of the labia minora and the posterior commissure is because of the fusion of the labia majora now if you can if you if you can see in this diagram the labia minora they are fusing even anteriorly over an erectile body so this erectile body is known as clitoris okay the erectile body for which the labia minora fuses anteriorly is known as a clitoris now we have discussed about the mons pubis we have discussed about the labia majora mons pubis we have discussed labia majora we have discussed labia minora we have discussed and clitoris we have discussed okay now we are left with the vestibule so what exactly is the vestibule is a triangular space which is present between a clitoris anteriorly and a four sheet posteriorly so this space is known as vestibule okay now after knowing this terminology we'll be discussing about some of the most important mcq related questions for our exams let's discuss about the homologous structures so what exactly is homologous structures guys homologous structures are similar structures in their counterparts for example labia majora so this labia majora is similar to labia majora in a female is similar to a scrotum okay a scrotum in males labia minora is homologous to a ventral aspect of penis okay ventral aspect of the penis or penile urethra now clitoris a clitoris is homologous to a glands penis okay so these are the very very important mcq questions for board exams now let's discuss about the embryology now labia majora are derived from 
means the, this labia majora embryologically take their origin from labia majora takes their origin from genital swellings okay a very very important question labia minora derived from genital folds clitoris takes its origin from genital tubercle okay now after studying about the embryology let's discuss a very important mcq okay all of the structures like you know in our exams these are the kinds of questions they will be asking you okay we know what exactly is vestibule okay into the vestibules there are certain structures opening so in our exams they will be asking you all of the following structures are opening into vestibule except so you should know what and all the structures which are opening into the vestibule now structures opening into the vestibule are let me show an image so that you will understand clear guys once concentrate here into the vestibule into the vestibule we are having an opening once concentrate we are having an opening this opening so this opening is a urethral orifice okay now here below that we are i'm having one more opening here you can see so this opening is the vaginal opening okay vaginal opening is also opening into the vestibule of the vulva now apart from that you can see here two glands are there two glands with their ducts okay the ducts of these glands are also opening into the vestibule so ducts of which glands guys can you know this glands can you say out it's the ducts of bartholin's gland bartholin's gland okay ducts of bartholin's glands are also opening into the vestibule now here in this image you can't see but here two more glands are also opening the ducts of even uh, two more glands are opening here what are they it's the ducts of okay skinny's gland okay so even ducts of skinny's gland is also going to open into the vestibule so we have discussed all of these following okay all of these are the structures which are opening into the vestibule okay what are they it's a urethral orifice okay urethral orifice vaginal opening okay next ducts of bartholin's gland okay next ducts of skinny's gland next the blood supply so this vulva is getting its blood supply from okay as it is also definitely needs to get the blood supply okay now the blood supply of this vulva region is getting its blood supply from the internal pudendal artery okay so internal pudendal artery is giving the blood supply for the vulva now nerve innervation it is a pudendal nerve okay the nerve innervation or the nerve supply for the vulva is coming from the pudendal nerve guys it will be very good if you can remember the root value of the pudendal nerve the root value of the pudendal nerve is from the s2 to s4 s2 s3 s4 segments okay now lymphatic supply now the lymphatic drainage from the this external genital area that's the vulva is going to be drained into inguinal lymph nodes okay but one important point which i want to highlight here it's the blood lymphatic drainage from the vulva it's going to be drained into lymph nodes there is no doubt okay that's the inguinal lymph nodes but clitoris now the lymphatic drainage from the clitoris is going to be drained into a special kind of lymph nodes known as rosen muller's lymph nodes 
okay rosenmuller's lymph nodes are the lymph nodes which are getting the lymphatic drainage from the uh, clitoris these rosenmuller lymph nodes are also known as lymph nodes of clockwet okay please keep that point in your mind very very important mcq for our exams okay next after that let's discuss something more important about the bartholomew's gland guys where exactly is this bartholomew's gland is located the site first of all before that uh, what is the function of this bartholomew's gland bartholomew's gland it's going to produce the alkaline mucus during the sexual activity or the sexual intercourse okay now what is the site of this bartholomew's gland bartholomew's gland is located in the super facial perineal pouch okay we'll be having a superficial perineal pouch and the deep perineal pouch now this uh, bartholomew's gland is located in the superficial perineal pouch very important mcq bartholomew's ducts are lined by so we'll be having a gland further we'll be having a, a duct see we know that the ducts of the bartholomew's glands are going to open into the vestibule there is no doubt in that now these ducts are lined by which kind of epithelium very very important mcq okay the bartholomew's duct is lined by columnar epithelium okay important now bartholomew's ducts open it guys i have already shown you okay these are the bartholomew's gland okay once concentrate here see these ducts are opening into the vestibule but they will ask you the exact location into the vestibule where exactly these ducts are opening now these ducts are opening at a junction okay now this is exact terminology you should keep in mind now bartholomew's ducts are opening at junction of anterior a two third and a posterior one third okay it is it is the junction of anterior two third and the junction of posterior one third of the vulva in a groove between labia minora and hymen okay exactly you have to keep in mind is this is a question which was repeated i think uh, more, um, like no uh, two to three times is the same exact question repeated in uh, different different exams okay now bartholomew's duct is going to be open in a junction between anterior two third and the posterior one third of the vulva that too in a groove between the labia minora and hymen now bartholomew's cyst guys this is the bartholomew's gland and this bartholomew's gland is having its duct if this duct is blocked what's going to happen all the secretions from this bartholomew's gland is going to accumulate and forms a cyst okay so this bartholomew's cyst so there are certain important mcqs okay around the bartholomew's cyst so what are they bartholomew's cyst is the most common cyst of vulva okay one important mcq and what is the most common cause for this i have already said it's a blockage of the duct because of infections okay infections can be a cause and what is if it is an infection there should be a causative organism what is that causative organism the most commonly the causative organism is the most common causative organism is e coli okay infection with this e coli is going to cause the blockage of the duct that's going to form the cyst okay now a patient came to you to your clinic and that patient is having this bartholomew cyst as a clinician how you are going to treat it so now the treatment of this bartholomew cyst is very very important question it is a incision and drainage okay so incision and drainage is the treatment of choice for the bartholomew cyst now what should be done if it is bartholomew's abscess if in the mcq if they are asking what is the treatment of choice for the bartholomew's abscess okay okay this is again recurring again and these infections are coming again and again so then you are not going to do this uh, incision and drainage then you will be doing mar supilization okay mar supilization is the treatment of choice for the bartholomew's abscess okay what is exactly is uh, mar supilization you are going to give an incision and you are going to evert the edge for example if this is the cyst you gave a incision 
okay you are going to evert the edges outside and you are going to suture it okay you are not going to close it again okay now this is the marsupialization is the treatment of choice for the batholinies abscess okay having said that let's continue with the internal genital organs okay now internal genital organs let's start with the vagina okay before that what are all the structures which are coming under internal genital organs it's the vagina next uterus fallopian tubes and ovaries these are the internal genital organs of a, a female now let's start with the vagina now valves first important point is the valves guys what exactly is vagina for example let me show you here in this image guys concentrate vagina is a fibromuscular tube okay vagina is a fibromuscular tube tube like structure as it's a tube like structure it's going to have the anterior wall posterior wall and lateral walls but i want you guys to keep in mind see this anterior wall is shorter okay when compared to the posterior wall posterior wall is more longer okay this is what i want to put in your mind the anterior wall of the vagina is shorter in length and the posterior wall is longer in length now anterior wall is almost 7.5 cm posterior wall is almost 9 cm in length okay now this vagina it is a fibromuscular tube which is connecting the external genitalia which is vulva with the uterus okay now after discussing about the walls i just want you guys to uh, to properly concentrate here this upper part of the vagina okay see here in this upper part of the vagina okay this is the upper part of the vagina see the cervix is protruding into the vagina which is forming a special pouch like structures okay uh, let me highlight it for you so that you will better understand as the cervix is protruding okay uh, as, um, just wait i will show you with the different color as the cervix is protruding into the upper part of the vagina it is creating certain pouches see these pouch like structures so these are known as fornices okay now because of this cervix protruding into the vagina it's going to form the fornix okay again see here this is the anterior fornix okay and this is the a posterior fornix now as well as you will be having the lateral fornices also okay now what is the important point anterior fornix is the shallowest fornix and the posterior fornix is the deepest fornix that's what i want to put in your mind mcq okay anterior fornix lateral fornix posterior fornix which is the deepest fornix it is the posterior fornix which is the deepest okay now after studying about the walls of vagina and the fornices of the vagina let's discuss about the epithelium line now this vagina it's lined by okay now this vagina is lined by a special kind of epithelium okay what exactly is that it's the it's not even special kind of epithelium it's a normal epithelium uh, it's a stratified okay squamous epithelium okay the lining of the vagina is from the stratified squamous epithelium repeated mcq for our board exams okay now having said that let's discuss about the inhabitant bacteria we have discussed about the walls we have discussed about fornix we have discussed about the epithelium now let's discuss about the inhabitant bacteria now physiologically there are certain good bacteria which is present in the vagina so what is that bacteria anyone i think most of you guys who are seeing this you know it it is the doder lins bacteria okay doder lins bacteria is is the inhabitant bacteria which is present in the vagina now let's discuss some of the important points about this dodelins bacteria okay now this dodelins bacteria which is a lactobacilli okay this dodelins bacteria is a lactobacilli 
okay as it's a lactobacilli it's going to produce lactic acid okay it's going to produce lactic acid in the vagina now what is the importance with that okay as lact as we know lactic acid is a acid so as there is lactic acid production in the vagina in the vaginal a ph is going to be acidic okay now guys keep in your mind the vaginal ph is acidic which is almost around 4.5 okay very very important mcq vaginal ph is acidic which is almost around 4.5 now in our exams they might be asking you just tell me the conditions where the vaginal ph is maximally acidic okay maximum sc dick ph maximum acidic ph in the vagina is seen during is seen during pregnancy okay during pregnancy it becomes more acidic and the same vaginal ph will become basic okay more alkaline basic during anyone during menstruation okay during menstruation the vaginal ph become more basic why because if we know that the our blood is more alkaline the ph of our blood is almost around 7.4 as this alkaline blood is passing through the vagina it becomes more basic okay now and also during menopause okay during menopause the vaginal ph will become more basic okay now let's uh, discuss after discussing about the bacteria now what and all other important points we have to keep in mind okay now let's discuss about the anatomical relations guys this is very very important you should know as a doctor okay you should know what and all the relations with the vagina anterior relations posterior relations and the lateral relations okay if i am if i am uh, explaining you by just drawing a uh, image that that's not going to be more effective so that let me show you an image where you can appreciate that relations okay now once concentrate guys here now this is the vagina this is the anterior wall of the vagina this is the posterior wall of the vagina this is the posterior wall this is the anterior wall guys once concentrate anterior to the vagina okay which structures do we have guys anterior to the vagina anterior to the vagina we are having urinary bladder that's the one structure so this is urinary bladder which is anterior to vagina okay now in the same way anterior to vagina we are also having a urethra okay the first structure is urinary bladder the second structure which is present anterior to vagina is the urethra okay now once concentrate on the posterior wall on the posterior wall in the upper part okay uh, see it's the post now we are discussing about the posterior walls of the vagina and its relations see the posterior wall of the vagina is related with a pouch in the uppermost part so this pouch is known as okay pouch of douglas okay the pouch of douglas or cul-de-sac okay the posteriorly the the vaginal wall is in relation with the pouch of douglas now in the middle region okay in the middle one third the vaginal wall is in relation with the what is this structure guys this is the rectum so in the middle see upper one third it is related with the pouch of douglas a middle one third it's related with the ampulla of rectum okay very very important mcq now in the same way the lower one third okay lower one third of the vaginal wall is in relation with the perineal body okay which is present here okay so so these are the anatomical relations anteriorly and posteriorly now let's rewrite so that you'll be getting an idea okay now anatomical relations now anteriorly the vagina is in relation with the 
urinary bladder okay plus urethra now posteriorly what do we have upper one third we have pouch of douglas middle one third we have ampulla of rectum and the lower one third we are having a perineal body okay very very important mcqs now lateral now this vagina is laterally in relation with okay so this is a very important uh, you know relation which you should by heart definitely you have to by heart these things okay now laterally it was in relation with the macken rod okay ligament okay i can't show you in this image but laterally this is the vaginal wall laterally this vaginal wall is supported by the macken rods ligament and the levator ani muscles okay these are the lateral relations okay guys now let's uh, discuss about the other important points which you need to be keeping in mind for our exams okay now the types of vaginal epithelial cells so what exactly i am talking about see guys the vaginal epithelium is a stratified squamous epithelium which we know it there is no doubt guys but here i want you to remind vaginal epithelium is a stratified squamous epithelium no doubt but in a newborn if in exam if they are asking you in a newborn in in wait in newborn the epithelium okay lining the vagina is transitional epithelium okay so transitional epithelium is lining the a vaginal wall in a newborn female okay now let's come with the types of vaginal epithelial cells guys in the vagina there are three different types of epithelial cells which are known as let me rewrite for you okay parabasal cells okay intermediary cells intermediate cells and superficial cells okay now these are the three different types of vaginal epithelial cells which are present in the vagina but what is the important points you have what are the important mcqs you have to keep in mind guys the number of the parabasal cells or intermediate cells or superficial cells depends on the hormones what does exactly mean see if in a female if there is no fluctuation of uh, if there is no fluctuation of any of the hormones hormones in the sense you know that uh, uh, estrogen and progesterone if there is no fluctuation uh, between estrogen and progesterone means there is no high amounts of estrogen and there is no high amounts of progesterone if there is no hormonal dominance then the parabasal cells will be more in number see parabasal cells will be more in number during no hormonal okay dominance there is no hormonal dominance at all but intermediary cells will be more in number during anyone intermediary cells will be more in number during progesterone dominance okay what does it exactly mean see progesterone when the levels of progesterone will be there more in the body the second half of the menstrual cycle or the luteal phase during luteal phase the progesterone is going to be the more dominant hormone so that during the second half of the menstrual cycle intermediary cells will be more in number okay now superficial cells superficial cells will be more in number during estrogen dominance okay now estrogen when you will be having more amount of estrogen in the body estrogen will be more during the 
first half of the menstrual cycle which is a proliferatory phase or the follicular phase okay now please keep these important points in mind okay very very important topic for our exams okay now let's discuss about the secretions in the vagina okay guys definitely in the vagina you can see the secretions but what is that important point which you should remember is a is you know the secretions in the vagina are not exactly fr coming from the vaginal glands why because there are no glands in vagina okay vagina have the secretions but there are no glands present in the vagina so from where do these secretions come from okay now the secretions in the vagina are coming from the majorly majorly from the cervix this is the cervical glands which are producing the mucus and that mucus is going to dribble down into the vagina okay so this is a very important mcq no glands in the vagina and the secretions are coming from the cervix now blood supply okay now let's discuss about the blood supply nerve supply okay now blood supply to the vagina is coming from anyone it's the descending vaginal artery okay so descending vaginal artery is giving the blood supply internal pudendal artery okay next middle rectal artery okay these three blood vessels are giving the blood supply for the vagina very important mcq to be kept in mind now developed from guys what exactly i am talking about see this vagina see let me show you this is the vagina and this vagina is in you know is in uh, connection with the cervix and this is the uterus let me i am just you know i am showing you a vague diagram okay now this vagina it is derived from embryologically it is derived from the upper two third okay the upper two third of the vagina is derived from mullerian ducts okay so mullerian ducts are forming the upper two third of the vagina not only upper two third of the vagina okay even the cervix fallopian tubes uterus all these are derived from the uh, mullerian duct but the lower one third of the vagina is derived from uro genital swellings okay now the lower one third of the vagina is derived from the uro genital swellings a very important mcq okay now after saying this let's let's uh, deal about the uh, now we have discussed the secretions blood supply nerve supply now supply is again from the you know that internal pudent uh, is, is the pudendal nerve which is up like the even vagina now develop from we have upper two third is upper two third is derived from the mullerian ducts and the lower one third is derived from the urogenital uh, urogenital sinus okay the same thing develop from it you know it was uh, it's a typing mistake now let's discuss about antiversion and anti flexion let's discuss about the topic of anti version and anti flexion what exactly they are you know so most of the students they will be getting confusion over here okay they they, they exactly don't know what is anti version and anti flexion let me show you so that you will be having a you will be getting a clear idea okay now once concentrate guys here so you know this is a vagina which i am showing you cervix and uterus is there now once concentrate i am drawing the lying long axis of the vagina this is the long axis of the vagina now i am showing you the long axis of the cervix okay i have shown you the long axis of vagina and long axis of cervix now these two are i'm making an angle okay these two are i'm making an angle of a 90 degrees okay 90 degrees acute angle so this angle is known as okay this angle is known as anti version okay so anti version is an angulation between a vagina and cervix now let me show you one more angle okay this angle the long axis of the uterus 
and the long axis of cervix the long axis of uterus and long axis of cervix are also making an obtuse angle okay which is almost around 122 uh, 130 degrees this angle is known as anti flexion okay so anti flexion is angle between uterus and cervix the angle between cervix and vagina is anti version no like you no know, why we are discussing this what is the importance most of the students will be thinking vagina cervix and uterus they are lying in one single line or they are lying in one single plane that's not true okay they are not lying in just like this pen they are not lying like this okay they are more angulated there is an angulation between each other okay now because of this no uh, you, you you should know this okay this angulation between uterus cervix and vagina okay now after discussing about the topics of antiversion and antiflexion let's discuss about the uterus okay now you guys know this is how uterus looks like you know this is the uterus let me highlight you okay so this part which i am highlighting is the uterus now in uterus for our exams what and all we should know okay now let's start the parts what are the parts of the uterus okay now there are three main parts in the uterus what are they body is thermus and cervix these three are the parts of uterus now let's discuss okay one by one okay now let's start with the body now the body of the uterus okay is going to have three layers okay uh, let me show you the body now concentrate here so this is the body of uterus okay now concentrate guys all this which i am rounding up is the body of the uterus okay now this area okay this small area this is known as isthmus and this part okay which i am highlighting this part is the cervix okay uterine body or corpus next isthmus next cervix now see here in the body in the body of the uterus we are having a layers outermost layer is known as a perimetrium the middle layer this middle layer is known as myometrium the muscular layer and the innermost layer okay this innermost layer is known as endometrium these three are the layers of the uterine body okay now let's come back perimetrium myometrium endometrium the lining epithelium guys the lining epithelium in the vagina is stratified squamous epithelium in a newborn it is a transitional epithelium now the lining epithelium in the uterus is columnar columnar epithelium okay so columnar epithelium is the lining epithelium in the uterus okay now let's discuss about the living ligature guys we have discussed that the body of the uterus is having three layers perimetrium myometrium endometrium i have already said myometrium is a muscular layer okay now this myometrium this myometrium is a muscular layer this myometrium see okay let me show you now this is the myometrium now here the muscles are arranged again arranged in three groups okay now outer longitudinal layer outer longitudinal layer okay inner circular layer okay now now in the myometrium the muscle fibers are arranged in three groups outer longitudinal inner circular but in between these two longitudinal and circular there is one more layer in the middle there is one more layer which is a crisscross layer okay now the muscle fibers they are interlacing they are crisscrossing each other 
now this criss crossing muscle fibers are this criss crossing muscle fiber layer is known as living ligature okay so what exactly is a living ligature guys living ligature is the a middle interlacing or the criss cross fibers in the uterine myometrium now once concentrate these are the a criss crossing muscle fibers now why it is known as a living ligature it's because now see in between these muscle fibers there are blood vessels see whenever this muscle fibers contract they will okay uh, they will close these blood vessels so why where it is important guys remember whenever there is delivery of the placenta there is a lot of hemorrhage after the delivery of the placenta the uterus needs to be contracted so that the blood vessels which are leaking they will be clamped down now this muscle layer okay this middle criss cross muscle fiber layer this muscle fiber layer is the one responsible for the shutting down of the leaking blood vessels of the delivery of the placenta okay now living ligature we have discussed all the important points okay it's the middle muscular layer which contains a criss cross muscle fibers now cornua okay what exactly is cornua guys remember in this diagram once concentrate see this is the uterine body this is the body of uterus okay this is the body of uterus uh, these are fallopian tubes okay these are fallopian tubes now fallopian tubes are attaching to the uterine body okay so this area is known as a cornua okay now what are the important mcq points we need to keep in mind regarding cornua okay what are the structures attached at cornua now once concentrate in this diagram fallopian tubes are attaching at the cornua this a ligamentous structure is also attaching to the cornua and there is one more structure which comes and attaches to the area of cornua what are they one three structures will come and attach to the area of cornua what are they one is fallopian tubes okay round ligaments and ovarian ligaments okay now these three structures will come and attach to the region of a cornua okay but you need to also know the relations what does i mean by see at the region of cornua the fallopian tube round ligament ovarian ligament they are coming and attaching but the structures which attach to the cornua from superior to inferior in the exam they will ask you anterior to posterior now remember anterior to posterior the structures which are attaching to the cornua are first round ligament okay second fallopian tubes third it's a ovarian ligament okay please keep this point in mind okay from anterior to posterior it's a round ligament fallopian tubes and ovarian ligament now from superior to inferior now a superior to inferior okay now superior most structure which is attached to the area of cornua is fallopian tubes okay fallopian tubes ovarian ligament and round ligament they are attached at the same level okay superior most is fallopian tube inferiorly at the same level ovarian ligament and round ligament are present 
after this what what else we have to know okay position of the uterus guys i have already discussed the position of the uterus is antiverted and antiflexed in the exam they will be asking you is the uterus antiverted retroverted antiflexed retroflexed okay these kind of questions are possible so the position of uterus is antiverted and anti flexed okay very very important now shape of the uterus what is the exact shape of the uterus guys uterus is something a pear like okay pear shape what is the weight of the uterus guys here when we are discussing about the weight we'll be discussing the weight of non pregnant uterus and pregnant uterus the non pregnant uterus the non pregnant uterus weight is somewhere around a 50 to 70 grams okay it it usually weighs 50 to 70 grams but during pregnancy uterus alone the uterus i'm not with the baby i'm just talking about the uterus the uterus weighs almost 1000 grams because the hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the uterine wall it increases in its weight okay now there is one more important mcq they will be asking you what is the weight of uterus immediately after delivery of the baby immediately after the delivery of baby what do you think what kind of changes will happen in the uterine wall uterus uterus weight will still be the 1000 grams okay suddenly after delivery there is no changes coming in the uterus it's still the same uterus the baby is delivered before it is 1000 grams even after it is a 1000 grams okay immediately after delivery okay immediately after delivery the weight of the uterus is still 1000 grams okay now please never forget very very important mcq now the length of uterus here again in the same way the length of a pregnant uterus is different the length of non pregnant uterus is different now length of non pregnant uterus okay the length of non pregnant uterus is a 6 to a 7 cm but the length of pregnant uterus will be almost around 35 A centimeter very very important mcq okay now length completed volume volume of a pregnant uterus volume of non pregnant uterus volume of non pregnant uterus is a 10 ml okay but the volume of pregnant uterus is almost 5000 ml okay now important mcqs we have discussed okay now let's discuss about the other topics okay guys in the uterus we have discussed the body part okay so far we have discussed the body of the uterus all important mcqs i have covered now let's discuss about the uterine isthmus guys what exactly is uterine isthmus i have already said you but let me give you a clarity okay so where exactly is this isthmic part present now we know what this is this is the external os and there is also an internal os but internal os here in internal os we are dividing the internal os into two parts anatomical internal os histological internal os okay so the area which is present between anatomical internal os and histological internal os this area is known as isthmus of the uterus okay now what is the important points you have to keep in mind regarding this okay now let's concentrate what is the site the site of uterine isthmus is above anatomical internal os okay below is a histological internal os 
okay now next importance what is the importance of this isthmus okay isthmus it's going to form the lower uterine segment as there is baby growing in the uterus the growing baby needs a lot of space for that in the later part, uh, later part of the pregnancy this isthmic part is going to form a new segment it's going to form a new compartment that's known as lower uterine segment okay now most of the lower uterine segment is formed by the isthmus okay now importance is lower uterine segment formation okay almost 70% of the lower uterine segment is formed by the isthmus remaining 30% will be formed by the cervix okay now let's discuss all the important points about the uterine cervix okay now what is the shape of the uterine cervix okay the shape of uterine cervix is a cylindrical okay important point you need to keep in mind now let me show you a two parts of the uterine cervix it's the ecto cervix and endo cervix now once concentrate guys the part of cervix which is coming into the vagina the part of cervix which is coming into the vagina okay this is known as ecto cervix and the part of cervix which is present more internally towards the uterus uh, this is known as endo cervix okay now what what important points we need to keep in mind regarding endo cervix and ecto cervix endo cervix is lined by columnar epithelium ecto cervix towards the vagina it's lined by squamous epithelium okay very very important mcq which was repeated more than 3 to 4 times okay ecto cervix endo cervix now transitional zone what exactly is a transitional zone transitional zone is the point where the columnar epithelium is converting into the squamous epithelium okay so internally it's lined by columnar epithelium externally like you know towards the ecto cervix is lined by squamous epithelium there should be a point or the junction between the columnar epithelium and the squamous epithelium this junction is known as a transition okay this the junction is known as a transitional zone there is one more name for this transitional zone okay it is known as squamo columnar junction okay squamo columnar junction is a point where the columnar epithelium is changing into squamous epithelium now what is the importance of this region what is the importance of this region this is the site this is the site where you can see most of the a uh, cervical uh, cancer ca cervix okay the cervical cancer the most common site is the transition zone or squamo columnar junction okay now a very very important mcq you should never miss okay now shape of the internal os now shape of the external os see here i just want to divide the external os towards the side of the vagina now this external loss in a non pregnant female in a non pregnant female the external os will look more circular but in a female who have delivered through the vagina okay the female who have delivered through the vagina the external cervical os will look more a slit like okay something like this okay let me show you an image so that you will be getting a clarity okay once concentrate here yeah see this so this is an image which is showing the external os a slit like uh, this kind of a slit like arrangement is seen in a female who have a vaginal delivery okay please keep that point in mind 
After that, let's discuss the other topics. Now, ratio of corpus to cervix. Remember, during different different stages in a female's life, the ratio to body and cervix, the ratio between the body and cervix is going to keep on changing. Before puberty, before puberty, the ratio will be something like this. Okay. Corpus to body ratio is corpus to cervix. Okay. <clears throat> before puberty, corpus to cervix ratio is 1 is to 2. Now, during puberty, it just got reverse. Okay. Now, corpus is going to increase in its size. So, it becomes double and cervix like 1. So, 2 is to 1. Now, during adult or reproductive age, even the corpus of the body of the uterus is going more bigger. It will become a 3 is to 1 or sometimes even 4 is to 1. Okay. Now, menopause, both the cervix and uterine body, they will atrophy, they will get atrophied and they will be of same size, 1 is to 1. Okay. A very, very important MCQ. Like, you know, most of the time you will be getting one MCQ from this area. They will be asking you, okay, corpus to body, corpus to cervix ratio or body to cervix ratio. Corpus in the sense, corpus is the other name for body. Okay. Body of uterus, body to cervix ratio. Guys, most of the students will be getting confused. They can even ask cervix to body ratio. Then you have to simply reverse the ratio values okay now after that blood supply to the uterus uterus is getting its blood supply from simple uterine artery okay uterine artery now very very famous you know repeatedly asked question uterine artery is a branch of uterine artery is a branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery okay now uterine artery is a branch of anterior division of the internal iliac artery which is going to give the blood supply for the uterus now cervix is getting its blood supply from the descending cervical artery which is a branch of uterine artery okay now nerve supply for the uterus Nerve supply for the uterus is coming from the segments T10 to L1. Okay. Now, nerve supply for the cervix. This is uterus. Now, nerve supply for the cervix is coming from S2 to S4. Now, what is the important MCQ related point? You should keep in mind. Guys, remember the uterus, the uterine body. It's getting its nerve supply from T10 segment, T10 spinal nerve or T10 to L1 spinal nerve. Guys, if you want to have a painless delivery, if you want to have a painless delivery, then you, you need to block the nerve fibers which are supplying the sensory innervation to the uterus. So if you want to have a painless delivery, then you need to give the block from a T10 segment. Okay. So for painless delivery, the block should be given from the a T10 segment. Okay. Now, um, for instrumental delivery. See, if you want to apply any instruments, definitely you have to go through the area of perineum. If you want to do, if you want to use any forceps, or vacuum then you need to block the nerve which is sup supplying the perineum what is the nerve supplying the perineum it's the pudendal nerve so pudendal nerve blocks okay pudendal nerve blocks will be given during instrumental delivery Okay. Please keep this point in mind. Never forget. Very, very important point. Now, nerve supply is completed. Uh, blood supply is completed. Now, let's discuss about the development of the uterus. Guys, <clears throat> just try to, uh, just try to recap. 
from where exactly the vagina is developed. The upper two third of the vagina developed from the mullerian ducts and the lower one third of the vagina is developed from the urogenital sinus. In the same way, try to remember this point, uterus, okay, a cervix, a uterus, a cervix, a fallopian tubes and the vagina upper two third part. All these are derived from the Mullerian ducts. Okay, so the development of the uterus is from the Mullerian duct. Okay, very very important MCQ to keep in mind. Okay, now let's discuss about the fallopian tubes. Guys, I'm trying to cover all the possible MCQs. Okay, now let's have a glimpse on a fallopian tubes. Guys, you know what exactly are fallopian tubes? Fallopian tubes are the tubular structures which are attaching to the uterus at a point of cornua. See, these are the fallopian tubes. These tubular structures which you are seeing here, which I am highlighting, these are known as the fallopian tubes. Now, these fallopian tubes are attaching to the uterine body at the region of cornua. We know it. Okay, there is no doubt. But this uterus, this fallopian tubes, it's, it's having certain parts. Okay. You have to know the parts and you have to know the what are the important points you need to keep in mind. Okay, now let's discuss the important parts. Let me show you one more uh, image so that you'll be having a clear idea. Okay, let's see this image. Okay, yeah, let's concentrate here. See guys. This part of the fallopian tube, okay, this part of the fallopian tube, this is known as infundibular part or fimbrial end. Okay, this part is known as infundibular part. After that, we are having a one more area. So, this part, the next part, okay, this part is known as ampulla. Okay, guys, next we are having the next region, this part of the fallopian tube, this part is known as, this part is known as isthmus. Okay, and the part which is going into the uterus, it is known as interstitium. Okay, interstitial part. Now, what are the important MCQ points you need to keep in mind for our exams? Okay, ampullary part. What are the important MCQs? Okay, ampullary part of the fallopian tube is the place where fertilization occurs. Okay, fertilization occurs here. Okay, in the ampulla. And ampulla is the most common site of a ectopic pregnancy most common site for ectopic pregnancy is ampulla okay now let's come with the let's discuss about the isthmus what important mcqs you have to keep in mind regarding isthmus okay isthmus is the place where you will be doing a tubectomy okay see if you want to perform tubectomy the most preferred site is isthmus why because if you if the, if the female wants to conceive again you need to give the reanastomosis isthmo isthmic reanastomosis is having a most are the, is having a highest success rate. So, isthmus, what is the most important point to keep in mind? It's the place where you can do the tubectomy. Okay. Now, interstitium. What is the most important point of the, you know, regarding interstitium? Now, interstitium is the narrowest part. Okay. The narrowest part in the entire fallopian tube is the interstitium. So, interstitium is the anatomical 
sphincter. Okay, interstitium is acting as an anatomical sphincter. The second narrowest part in the fallopian tube is isthmus. So, isthmus, okay, now one more important point for the isthmus is it's the second narrowest part as its second narrowest part it's acting as physiological sphincter okay now never forget these important mcqs okay ampulla is the place where fertilization occur ampulla is the place where ectopic pregnancies can occur isthmus if you want to do the tuchiectomy isthmus is the most favored side why because isthmo isthmic anastomosis is having highest chances of success next interstitium is the narrowest part interstitium acts as a anatomical sphincter okay enough if you know these important points enough now let's parts we have discussed now lining epithelium what is the lining epithelium in the fallopian tubes? The lining epithelium in the fallopian tubes is ciliated columnar epithelium. Okay, what are the special kinds? Very, very important MCQ point. A special kinds of cells which are present in the fallopian tubes are peg cells. Okay. Now, what is the blood supply for the fallopian tubes? Now, once concentrate, guys, the medial two-third, the medial two-third of the fallopian tube, okay, let me show you. The medial two-third of a fallopian tube is getting its blood supply, okay? The medial two-third of a fallopian tube, it's getting its blood supply from the uterine artery, okay? Now, let me show you. Now, this medial two-third, this medial two-thirds, it's getting its blood supply from the uterine artery and the lateral one third of the fallopian tube, it's getting its blood supply from the ovarian artery. Okay, important MCQ points, the blood supply for the fallopian tubes. Okay, let me rewrite, uh, rewrite again so that you'll be getting a better idea. Now, yeah. Blood supply, medial two-third from the uterine artery, lateral one-third from ovarian artery, okay? Nerve supply, nerve supply for the fallopian tube is from a T11, a T12, L1 segments, okay? Now, developed from, I have already said you guys, the uterus, cervix, upper two-third of the vagina, and the fallopian tubes even. They all got their origin from Mullerian ducts. Okay, now completed. So fallopian tube is also completed. So the last topic, okay, now we will be discussing is the ovaries. Okay, guys, now you can see whatever you are seeing here is a cross section of the ovary. Now, how many ovaries does a female have? A female have two ovaries. What is the function of the ovaries? Ovaries contain the developing follicle which releases the ovum. Okay. Now, what we have to keep in mind. Okay. For our exam, a ovary measures. What is the size of the ovary? A height, length, no, that thing. Height, length, width and height. It's the 3 into 2 to 1 centimeter. Okay. Now, formed it. These ovaries are formed intra-abdominally at a T10 segment and they have descended down and now they are playing, no, at first they are developed at T10 segment. Later they will be descended down and they will be placed in the ovarian fossa. Okay. Now, with the help of ovaries descended down, okay, they are formed at T10 segment, no doubt. They are descended down with the help of gubernoculum okay so gubernoculum with the help of a structure gubernoculum the ovaries are going to descend down from a t10 to ovarian fossa now ovaries are covered by or ovaries lined by you know once concentrate 
on the surface of the ovaries, you are having, you no, know, the female will be having a cuboidal type of cells, cuboidal type of epithelial cells. This is known as germinal epithelium. Okay. Now, over is covered by germinal epithelium, which are cuboidal cells. Okay. Cuboidal cells. Now, ovaries in relationship with the ligaments. Guys, ovaries are present in the ovarian fossa, but these ovaries are attached to the uterus medially and the ovaries are attached to the pelvic wall laterally. Even these ovaries are attached to the broad ligament posteriorly. So, you have to know ovaries in relationship with their ligaments. Now, try to concentrate. Ovaries attached with with lateral pelvic wall. Okay. With the help of which ligament? A very very important MCQ. It is a infundibulo pelvic ligament. Infundibulo pelvic ligament. Now, ovaries are attached to ovaries attached to uterus. Okay, ovaries are attached to the uterus via which ligament guys? Via ovarian ligament. Okay, with the help of ovarian ligament, ovaries are attached to the uterus. Next, ovaries attached to a posterior wall of broad ligament. Okay, with the help of, okay, with the help of mesovarium. So, in the exam, they will be asking you, mesovarium or mesovarium connects ovaries with the posterior wall of the broad ligament. Infant develop pelvic ligament connecting ovaries to the lateral pelvic wall. Ovarian ligament connects the ovaries with the uterus. Okay, so we have discussed about the ovaries and their ligaments. Next, what else we have to keep in mind? Next, discuss about the uh, blood supply. Uterus is getting its blood supply from the uterine artery. Even ovaries are getting it, their blood supply from the ovarian artery. Okay, blood supply of the ovaries is coming from ovarian artery. Okay, now what is the important MCQ you have to keep in mind? Ovarian artery, uterine artery is a branch of anterior division of internal iliac artery. Ovarian artery is a branch of abdominal aorta. Okay, ovarian artery is a branch of abdominal aorta, a super important MCQ. Okay, now, if for example, if this is the abdominal aorta, from abdominal aorta, okay, a female is getting the ovarian artery at which level at l2 okay at l2 level ovarian artery is taking its origin from the abdominal aorta what is the nerve supply guys and the last and final you know mcq uh, for this video it is the nerve supply of the ovary the nerve supply of the ovary is coming from anyone it's coming from the ovarian plexus okay now in this uh, video we, we have covered all the external genitalia of the female okay all the external genitalia of the female all internal genitalia of the female and all the related mcqs we have discussed everything so in the next video we'll discuss about the uh, menstrual cycle in a, a female okay thank you